This is what we've been doing for almost two weeks now. Hanging out on beaches and taking videos of turtles, yeah. <laughs> Some Fujifilm red badge action here. do a little quick demo of what I've been doing. I want to convey how apocalyptic this is. And the, the, the truth is there's a lot more color here than you might expect. Although with our polarizers, we're seeing more color than our cameras can actually see. Like we're seeing red. Yeah. But I actually, so there's advanced filters in here where you can isolate colors. And I thought that might be a little fun. I'm just like, I wanted to show everything kind of black except isolating green colors. So all you see is that green tree there. That's cool. So kind of having some fun with that. I tried it with red and the camera doesn't pick up oh, that there's well. any red here. It's interesting. There's it a lot of red. shows it, but the camera doesn't see it that way. You read my the shades, see it, it way more. Pure black. So, but yeah, you can have some fun. I think some, a place like this is a great time to use those creative filters and just get a little crazy. Try something different. All right, let's do a little shooting with these yep. rocks and then run before we burn completely. Yeah, exactly. It's really hot. We're the only ones out here, in fact. <laughs> so yeah, we'll have some fun and head back. All right, so we pulled over on the side of the road to where you would normally take a turn to go up to Mount Ikea, but there is a protest going on. Yeah, so. <laughs> we're completely blocked from reaching the summit where all the telescopes are and the crater. And instead we have a major protest which has been going on for months. the last eruption of the Kilauea volcano happened right here. It's hoping is a connection to the highway is now this and there's some people looking at it but this is really fresh lava. We may take a peek. We need a bit of surveillance. We need to see what happened here. So actually, we can see, or I can see a little thing about travel photography here. Um, it's especially an editorial request these days, or like tourism boards. They really want photos, not just of beautiful landscapes, but they want people, either people interacting with it or just like a subject. Because without it, it just doesn't give you scale. It doesn't feel like a tourism or travel friendly shot. So, and there are ways to do that without, you know, going up to people, having to get model releases, having them pose. So what I like to do is try to get someone that's like ahead of us or someone behind us so that, you know, if they're wearing a hat, wearing sunglasses or just interacting and you can see enough of them to know that there's a person there but not capture their identity, getting those kind of shots are really good for travel. 
All right, so we are at Pu'uhonua Ho'onau Nau. I may have mispronounced that. My Hawaiian is really rusty. But this is known as a place of refuge. So back in the day, if you broke the kapu or their sacred law, you could come here, and if you reach the boundaries of this area, this was a place of refuge. And all I know about it is that it's very beautiful, and you get to see some artifacts from the Polynesians. So let's have some fun. I noticed there's some expansive views so I got my size lens on which is a 12 on a crop. I'm walking through the lava field because I have a piece of art in mind that I want to make and I really like coconut trees and this little grove here is one of the nicest I've ever seen so I'm walking through this lava field to get a particular shot and I want to make a print of that and put it in our house so let's see how this goes. I have a pretty decent shot from here where my foreground is lava rock and I also possibly have the other shot which is just the palms but um, I want to experiment with both well I think I got my shot it got even better because I found a tight pull in front of the palms right here and I use my wide angle size and I have the foreground shiny water over lava rock and the background is these gorgeous palms um, so that's one of the shots I wanted and another shot I want is pure little palms so I don't know if I'll make a little mini series of two or three shots or whether I'll print out one and put it in our house on this side you have what looks like another lagoon which is really pretty I love this terrain so gorgeous you got the right lens for this the GoPro is getting it just right, the composition, so that size is gonna as well. So I can't see, but there's like dozens, maybe even a hundred yellow fish, very bright. I wonder if it's like a bit of an infestation because even by our place we I saw a lot oh, really? of them on the water. Yeah. I, I saw them way down the coast by yeah. by There's the place of, of refuge. We yeah. Need a polarizer. Yeah, we, we really definitely need a polarizer. We tried to buy one but we couldn't find we it. We went so to far. Walmart out of just pure desperation. I knew Walmart wouldn't have pretty it. Pretty sad photography you know. section there. You never know. It's still there. It's sideways. Yeah. It's pretty funny. It thinks it's being clever. Ooh, it's happening. So that's the nice thing about rain as well. Is that that's how you get rainbows. This is why Hawaii is the rainbow island. You have them every single day. Yeah. It's actually quite spectacular. And right now, very close here, is a big rain. I hope it doesn't. Uh, it is kind of coming. It looks like coming as yes. now the clouds are over us. But straight ahead. Do you have your zoom? I do, yes. Yeah, I should put it on. driving and the flying and the getting up early and suffering through the heat and getting eaten by mosquitoes and all the rest of it. This reminds me of Palouse Falls where we just went and say, yeah. there were signs everywhere of how many people have died this year. Yeah, for this I'm gonna have to take out my Fujifilm 
and do this correctly. All right, so first thing here is I have a frame which is dark and a um, subject in the middle which is bright. So I, I have to go to 400 dynamic range. Also, I am shooting Velvia because I want the greens to pop. Right now it's cloudy. And the last thing is um, I have the H XH1. So after I was done with video, now I'm switching to still. And thanks to the XH1, I have the ability to slow down my shutter a lot. So what I can do is go to very low shutter speed and make the waterfall look smooth while it's still handheld. But I need for that a filter, which I do happen to have. This is why I travel with variable ND filters. And normally I use this for video, but right now it actually is required for this photo. Let's see what we get. Now I can get a one second shutter even. And this also lets me go to ISO 4, 800 and yet dim the shutter a lot so that I can get the max dynamic range the correct exposure I can probably go lower the, the issue with going lower is I miss the sweet spot of my lens so I'm trying to stay at f11 and keep dimming but I'm already maximum dim at 800 so this is pretty much what I'll get let's see here so XH1 with IBIS and here we go Silky smooth waterfall, handheld. filming the change of the environment from the top of the mountain where we were with the coffee all the way down to the tropical part in the coast and the GoPro was right up here and then it unfortunately rained which is fine but um, it was also by the edge of the wiper so I pushed the wiper by habit and then it nudged the GoPro a little bit and loosened the grip of the suction cup so at one of the turns afterwards the GoPro just flew off together with the suction cup and then it came apart in the middle of the highway so i had to pull over and walk around the highway around these turns and retrieve it and the uh, joby suction cup is no more it was in pieces when i found it however the gopro is unscathed and the olanzi cage is pretty much completely intact it's just a little scraped so the whole thing survived just fine except the joby part which is to be expected is made of these segments it's really just the bottom piece missing here with the suction cup and the issue is I could not have looked because I was in the middle of the highway on a bend where I can't see anything. So let's see if this is working. Just like normal, yep. It's on right now. I'll use it to show you the view over here. So yeah, love the Joby suction cup. It's perfect and uh, very strong. However, this was the combination of A, water and B, pushing it over with the windshield or wipers. So because of that, it, it lost grip. You know, you want to watch for water and things bumping it. So I think the GoPro is running just fine. We're using it right now. Yes, and another thing is, you know, we use the Olanzi cage, but luckily at the very last second, I almost kept it on, but we took out the mic adapter and the mic. Because imagine if that had been on as well. Yeah. It would have potentially damaged or lost that. Yeah. So yeah, really everything is still intact and we can continue using the camera. Yeah, so we're here at this awesome view. 